What's up you guys? Welcome back to Respawn. It's Wednesday, which is a little unusual for us, but uh, we're just coming out of E3. Did you have fun at E3, man? I did. Lots of fun. Um, I just noticed something. It's hotter than a fucking ball sack on Dagobah in this room right now, and I'm going to start sweating in a minute. Is that going to be... You smell like a ball sack on Dagobah, too. Smegma. The fluid on your balls. We're going to slam through this in no time because it is literally super warm in here and I'm kind of uncomfortable. I'm sitting in a pool in my... What was it? Smegma. Yeah. So anyway, first up, Driftor is doing some myths and glitches. He's coming up on Defend the House territory here. He goes through these in rapid fire style. So go watch him. Good stuff in there. Some of it uh, may not be new to you, but whatever. The vid's good. First up is the holographic sight on the FAL. With a red dot, the FAL does 50 to 35 damage, which means at some distances you might need three shots to kill somebody. When you put a holographic sight on the gun, however, the damage goes up to 50 to 40. With stopping power, it will kill in two hits at any range, even with a silencer. For those of you that were interested in checking out Prince of Persia of the Forgotten Sands, maybe you're thinking about buying it, we actually have a, a Let's Play by Homicide, so go check this video out. It's ridiculous that he can do all this type of stuff. I don't even think half of this stuff that he's doing is humanly possible. Kim Burton's latest is uh, Silly Soldiers, a Silly Soldiers series where he uh, he comes up with weird game types. I gotta say though, uh, he has finally figured out a way to wreck. Go check out his latest episode of Silly Soldiers. Oh, okay. oh yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, no, Maxwell. Yeah. For those of you that are not so much interested in the public matches, we actually have Guns for Hire from Next Gen Tactics walking us through a video on their game battle series, so they're playing competitive gameplay. I have a horrible, horrible temper when it comes to uh, Call of Duty. I rage quit. Well, I don't rage quit anymore because we stream live. The thing about game battles is that it's a little bit more campy than public matches, but you have to expect that when you're playing on a competitive level. So it's not so much like a taboo thing. Yeah, uh, and on the topic of camping, Muzafuzza has turned in uh, some commentary where he's talking about his thoughts on the subject. Uh, I gotta say though, honor rules aside, Call of Duty is a camper's game. Like it or not, left to uh, left to you know their own devices, these games are gonna be a little campy. This game plays a little campy. Not really though. I mean, look at me. I'm running around trying to trying to find people to kill. And uh, that's that's how it usually is, unless uh, unless people are pouring into me. I mean, unless people are just the kills are just flowing in. The Royal Viking is doing a 30-day challenge where he's trying to do a commentary for every day during the month of June. I don't know what you would talk about every day for the month of June. This um, one's it's, it's whatever. We both have huge jeans boners right now. <laughs> I was thinking that before we even started. I hate how jeans do this. Because mine fold up, I mean, it looks like my dick is pencil thin, the way this folds up, you know what I mean? Wow. It's not what it's like. I keep that shit tucked nicely, but... I'm sta you know, I've been staring at his dick the entire time that he's been talking. I seriously just feel like that. I mean, I would pay money for a pair of jeans that gave me, like, a big, hunky jeans boner. Not a fucking peewee, whatever. But you don't want to draw too much attention to yourself. If you were walking around with a fucking, just straight up, just like a cone, yeah, <laughs> street cone coming out of your pants. So he's playing Perfect Dark, and uh, it's a pretty cool series, so go check it out. This is the thing about these games, it's a big maze. Where am I going? It never tells you, or I think it does tell you that I'm just stupid, but whatever. Alright, next up we got Tabe. He's going 120 and 7 and making it look like it's just fucking like he's having lunch while he's doing it. He's on Scrapyard. Commentary is money on this though, partly because he's Swedish, so anytime he opens his mouth it's fucking gold. But he's talking about what scares him. Go check it out. What's, what does Tabe fear? Find out within. Probably my biggest fear, besides from dying from a beedrill, like stung, stung uh, I don't know, uh, is probably not being remembered when I die. Next up we have Big Optic X, he's playing some free-for-all on Storm and he's hitting some nasty, nasty shots in this match. I was very impressed. Today I have a game of free-for-all in Storm. 
and Storm is quickly becoming one of my favorite maps in the game. Not just the new downloadable content uh, because of his high vantage points and the fact that people just tend to run around aimlessly, just not giving a shit on where they're going to be. Arriba la raza! He's a dad now? Mm -hmm. That kid. Hmm. Oli Optic Olivia, I think is her name. Oh, it's a girl? Yeah. yeah. Uh, finally, before we let you guys go, since this is my show and I can do basically whatever I want, I saw something awesome on our main channel. I emailed this around because even here we don't get to see everything that get. I mean, so much is going up. So uh, I saw a short film called Avatar Days. Uh, link through to this video. It's badass. It's basically a really well done uh, film revolving around people's wow avatars. Go check it out. It's masterful. All right, so that's enough videos to last you for a little while. Uh, we got Frag Cup 2 coming up. Um, and this Frag Cup is look, we've learned a lot from our previous experience. And this one is looking bad ace. We've got a, a commentator who's gonna do like legit commentary, not like you and me talking about like ex-girlfriends and shit, like legit color commentary. He's awesome. And uh, and we're gonna be doing some preview coverage coming up soon, just so you guys can be introduced to the uh, teams. I think you're gonna like what we've done with the place. And one other thing. I've noticed that many of you have a strong dislike for my lip ring. And while I can understand differing points of views, I mean, we can't all be from California where we're generally tolerant of other people, where we generally aren't hateful and spiteful people. I'm gonna issue you a challenge. Once a week, I'm gonna open my lobby up and play 10 Call of Duty 4 1v1 snipers. And anyone who beats me gets to decide if I keep this in or not. So I'm gonna call this the Lip Ring 1v1 Challenge. So that's a good name for it. This is your deal, man. This is your deal. I'm gonna call this the Lip Ring 1v1 Challenge. And if you want to hear about these open lobbies and when they're opening up, you can just follow me on Twitter. Put that right in the, in the screen right here. And then we'll close it like that. And then open it up again. And then close it right back up. That's for you, Wood. We're done. Just kidding, Hex, I love your daughter. Where were we? <laughs>